Hey, what is up? Welcome to my presentation on how to do brief factor size 8-8 on our chapter 8 homework 1. I hope I got the right one. This is chapter 9, I'm sorry, chapter 8, accounts receivable of week 9. This is a pretty straightforward problem. We have your dates of notes, your terms, maturity date, etc., and your formula. So first of all, they want to know how to get how what our maturity date is going to be based on these numbers here. First we have April 1st, and the terms is 60 days. We're not going to do, we don't count months, we count days. So we start off with April 1st. And then we subtract how many days is on, on is, um, how many days is in April 30th? 30 days. So 1 take away 30 is 29. Then we add how many days is in May? 31. Which equals 60. So I'm just going to type in 29 plus 31 equals 60. Um, that's not supposed to be dollars, but basically that's how you do it. May, and that becomes May 31st. So on the next one, you start with July 2nd, minus how many days? 31 days in a month. That will equal 29, and then we only need to add 1 plus 1 equals 30. So we got up to 31, one more day, that's August 1st. Next, and finally, we have six months, starting with March 7th. Now in this case, we don't count days, we count months. And as you probably know, we don't start with month, with March, when we're counting. Same as when we do days, we don't start with April 1st. For example, let's say you're counting the days to Thanksgiving. You're not going to start with November 13th. You'll start counting at November 14th. That's what is not used, what most people do. So, in this last problem, six months from March is April, May, June, July, August, September. That's pretty straightforward. Now, we have our formula here, principal times annual weight times the annual interest rate times that equals total interest. And of course, what it doesn't show here is that the actual formula is, I believe it said, principal, principal times the annual, annual interest rate and the times, meaning is it months, is it years, and what 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 it's going to be. So what I have here is your principal of 571200, my annual interest of, of, of 11%, and then the terms is 30. Now, I have 360 here because we're doing, we're dividing by days, and According to chapter the chapter eight reading, they want us to use three hundred and sixty days. Other people may use three hundred and sixty five, but for the sake of the homework it's actually going to be three hundred and sixty. Now what I like to do with this type of equation is the first thing I want to do is do times to get to get that divide out of the way, I times the 60 day terms by 360 days and that's the number I get. Next, I'm going to time principal, the principal rate, the principal times the annual interest. If they're doing it by calculator or writing it on paper, don't forget to um, make it 0.11, not 11%, not 
but 0.11 and then when you're done uh, actually you don't need to wait um what I'm trying to say is if you're using scratch paper using a calculator or some other way make sure you make it times 0.11 since I'm using Excel it'll be automatic so times 11 percent and times this nice number here and I get 10,472. Boom. Now, this next one. And we're going to do that one last. So now we have the, the third problem. Um, same thing as above, the only difference is that it's six months rather than 60 days, the third day. It's just six months. So. Instead of divided by 360, we'll be divided by 12 months. So in this kind of problem, with a problem says 30 days, you want to divide by 360 days. Unless the problem says to use 365, you use 365. I'm hoping that the exam will, will, will make that clear if we have a problem like this. I would hate... Okay, I'm going to stop talking now and keep going. Um, six months divided by 12 months and you get a nice little number of 0.5. So remember days, days, month, month. And that's how I got 0.5. Next. Um, the, this number times this number times this number equals this number here. Now, on your calculator or on your scratch paper or whatever you use, you might get a number that looks like that. But according to the problem, you don't want decimals. So in Excel, you use these two buttons here, and that will get the correct answer of 6,201, because we don't want decimal points. Um, so as a final reminder, always make sure you read this so you know how the problem, what kind of answers they're looking for. Now last but not least, we are going to solve for x because we don't know what the percentage is in this problem. Now I already have it in because I've already completed the problem, but here we don't know what the annual interest is, so we have to solve for x. x would be something that looks like this. The equation would probably look like this if you're going to work it out on paper. Principal times x, which is the annual rate, times... Uh, hmm. 30 divided by 360 days equals um, the interest rate, 737. Now, now, we can't do it like that. The first thing we need to do is, as you can see here, the first, that's the very first thing I did. 30 divided by 360. And then, the next thing I did was I multiplied. Um, where did it go? I multiplied um, the principal times this. That's my second step. And then finally, after I was done getting them out of the way, I multiplied, I mean divided, 730 divided by 8,000. 8, now remember, in your algebra, what you're trying to do, you need to make sure you get x, x by itself. That's why I divided 737 by the remaining, by the numbers that were multiplied here in order to get x by itself. So I hope, I hope I made this clear for you. 
Um, if you have any more questions, post on the discussion board, ask Brother Fox, um, or and another thing you can do is you can go to YouTube and see if there's another version of this problem on here. Um, do a search for body plus beef exercise 8-8 and maybe, um, maybe what another perspective might help. Because everybody has a different way of explaining a problem and what one person says might make more sense than the way I explained it. Or what I say, the way I explain it might make sense to someone instead of somebody else. It's kind of interesting how we all have a different way of explaining the same thing. So um, that's another option you can use. Um, if you haven't, make sure you use an interactive tutorial and go through the slide so that does a pretty good job of explaining it. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, post to the discussion board. Hope you enjoy this week. And don't don't give up. Ask someone for the for help. And keep on trucking. Have a great day everybody.